Why this has never been done for the theater, totally eludes me. I think that this show, especially in the times that we're going through right now, will appeal to somebody, anybody, and everybody that, that has a belief in the human spirit. My primary draw for this was the fact that, like most of the others, uh, it's one of my favorite books of all time. presentation where it's seeing the work of all of the collaborators finally come together and be realized on stage. It seems such a perfect fit for the theater. The message is so, so wonderful and so empowering. And I think this is something that we need on, on Broadway or wherever just because you know, the story of Great Expectations is so wonderful. My first thought that Great Expectations should be turned into a musical when I was teaching ninth grade English. No, I didn't really have any idea that my grandmother was doing this. When I was 80, I thought, well, maybe I could write the words at least. Her interest and passion in the project was what kind of was a catalyst for me. A very uh, talented music writer, uh, Dick Winsler, uh, was interested in it. But to have the freedom to just allow the muse to take you where you want, you know, I mean, that's amazing. I, mean, I just wanted to communicate that he will come into the most handsome party. There will be no great expectations such a song that is suited to advancing education. A prayer to the man I will make a career and we will pay to release the aforementioned patrony. Expectations. Why don't you and your writing partner adapt the Dickens novel into a musical? And so I always knew that it was on her mind, but I never in a million years dreamt that she would take a year of her time and just secretly, you know, do this and then send me a manuscript of 200 some odd pages. When somebody's that passionate about something, you can't help but get swept up into that. And so, I mean, I really credit her for being my inspiration and being involved in the show. We were all so excited when we learned about Bernie Weinrub doing the New York Times feature and the timing with respect to when we did the presentation that it was going to be the feature story of the Sunday Arts and Leisure section was really, I think, gave us all a validation that, wow, you know, this is an idea whose time has come. I could walk wonderful story of about an 87 year old woman and you know her realizing you know a, a dream. The primary goal I want an audience member to walk away with is a dream is worth dreaming. Great.
one final question. Have you bought your Tony dress yet? <laughs> That's a little premature. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much.